Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog farmhouseonboon.com and today I'm going to share with you how we built our DIY slate tile herringbone stove pad. So I have a whole bunch more details that will be coming soon about this chimney and how we're gonna heat with wood in this house and what all it took to get this house to where we could heat with wood because it's not as straightforward as just sticking a wood stove here. But first today I wanna to share with you a little bit about this ember pad and why we ended up going this route. So we were supposed to already have our wood stove installed a couple weeks ago. And when our stove guy, our chimney guy came with the ember pad to go underneath our stove, because ours is one that has legs, so it doesn't need necessarily height for fireproof. It just needs 18 inches all around every door that opens and the whole stove of ember protection so that if any embers would fall out, it wouldn't go onto the floors and catch everything on fire. He brought this pad and when he set it down and he was going to install the wood stove, I was like, I do not like it. It just, it looks like, not like plastic, it wasn't plastic, but it just almost rubber. It just didn't have any aesthetic value to it. So then we started thinking, okay, you know what? We're gonna have this wood stove forever. Let's cut the wood floor out and put tile and so that it all goes in flush with the floors. And then I really got to worrying about that decision because in the future, someone might not want a wood stove in this house. They might not want to heat with wood. We might not want to in the future. And I really don't want to irreversibly damage the floors whenever we could probably do something else. So then we finally settled on this idea, which was just to lay some tile on backer board and then finish it off with a little transition and essentially make our own ember pad. Also, I should note, um, I had several people tell me, you know, you could use brick and all these different things. We have French doors right here. And so it, they actually have to clear it so we really were limited on what we could do. These barely clear it, and so it needed to be very low profile. It's in our entryway. Again, more of this coming, but let's dive into how we actually built this. I selected some slate tile that I found at Home Depot. I will leave a link down in the description box. It was just the best option I could find online, especially because we needed this quick. I went with the four inch by 12 inch size, and decided that I wanted to do the herringbone pattern, which was perfect for people who've never done tile before, right? Now we needed our ember pad to be 54 by 48 inches. So what we did was we took the three by five piece of backer board, cut six inches off one side to make it 54 inches as opposed to 60, the five foot way. And then we added a one foot piece from another piece of backer board that Luke cut so that it would be 48 coming away from the chimney. We then started laying the hairy moan pattern. Now to do this, what you're told online is to start by finding the center, which the center of our chimney is where we would want one to go this way and one to meet up to it. So that that would be the center of the triangle. We ended up moving ours just a touch so that it would end on both sides with a whole tile and we could just fill it in with some triangles versus trying to um, have to cut off a large portion of it. So we off-centered it just a touch. It's not something I end up noticing at all because it still zigzags the whole way. It just, it looks good in my opinion. Now what we did was we started at the bottom and then we just worked our way up. It's really easy to do the herringbone pattern whenever you're filling up 90% of it because you don't have to do any cuts, you just put it all on. What was the tricky part was after that, filling in with the pieces around the outside edges. So we borrowed a tile friend of ours, my cousin has a tile wet saw. We borrowed that and made this process really easy and we just tag teamed the whole job. So I would measure onto each tile where Luke needed to cut and make a mark with pencil. He'd cut and we just kept that process going. So I would measure and mark, he would cut and then apply it with the thin set tile adhesive. Most of the cuts were pretty straightforward. Um, my little method of, of figuring it out was by marking on the backer board where the tile would go and then measuring that line and then putting that same size line onto the tile. And then in some of the really tight spots, so there was a few spots where we needed a triangle about this size, I just would use a piece of paper and shove it down into the triangle that was needing a tile and then just push it so I could see the creases, cut out the pattern and then trace it onto the tile. 
We definitely got better than where we went on. I found that the first ones had a little bit of overhang and by the end we were getting a really snug fit. It was a really simple project. I actually planned to repeat it whenever we work on our fireplace in the living room. We're going to be doing a faux fireplace. We already bought a, a Victorian surround and summer cover. So we're gonna tile around that and then we're gonna create a fake hearth pad so that it all looks very real and not like we just stuck a mantle on the wall. So I'm glad that we now have these tile skills because it is something that will serve us well. Now when we are laying the herringbone tile pattern, we use 1 16th spacers. Those are really tiny. I wanted them to be pretty close together because what I really desired for this was just a slab of slate. But because our floors are uneven, I was worried that it would almost rock a little bit if we did that. So I wanted smaller tiles and to get that look, we just put them really close together. For the grout, we use unsanded charcoal grout that we just picked up also at the Home Depot. Now to finish it off around the edges so we didn't just have raw cut tile and backer board, we just used something we found over at Lowe's called Pine Quick Corner. It's just a little corner piece. We first painted them black to match the hearth pad because I really, like I said, just want it to look like a slab of slate so I want it to blend in. And then we cut it at 45 degree angles at each corner with our miter saw so that they would match up and then just fix them on with some adhesive and that created a nice edge that we're not stubbing our toe on a rough cut slate tile. Pretty quickly the corners got shoved off uh, by traffic so we ended up sticking some thin trim screws through just on the corners to hold it in a little bit better and it's held up for over a week now without any movement so i do believe that will work it did have to require us to put a few holes in the floor but they're small and now this is firmly in place i think this project cost us around 150 dollars we spent 96 dollars on the tile we still have a whole box left so maybe i can use that in my mantle it's just slate tile natural stone I think about 15 for the thin set, 15 for the grout, and then the spacers were negligible, maybe like four or five bucks. And then $11 per backer board. We did use two, but we have a large portion of one still left. So again, maybe we can use that for a different project, but really inexpensive, especially because I was looking for custom ember pads online and everything I was looking at was around $600 for the size that I wanted. And then also it's just so much prettier. When I saw that ember pad, I was like, this is just a pad that is fireproof. Certainly we can create something a little bit more beautiful and inexpensive too. And I think that we really did. I'm happy that now when I look into the living room area through to the dining room from the kitchen with the chimney, I will see some nice slate versus um, just a pre-made pad. So this is definitely a project that I would recommend doing. If you want more detailed instructions and also a printout, I always have over on my blog for recipes and projects, I have where you can actually print the instructions so that you can do the project yourself without referring constantly back to the video. You can check that out in the description box below. All right, well, thank you so much for watching this video. If you're brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make two videos every week on food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by our farmhouse.